Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store, and today we are going to roll some 12AX7s. Now, in Europe, the 12AX7 is called the ECC 83. It's the exact same tube, just a different name. The 12AX7 has many different manufacturers and variations. It has a high MU or 100 of 100 or a gain of 100, which makes it one of the highest gain preamp tubes ever made. It's not hard to see why so many of these tubes end up in phono preamps, which need a high gain tube to get the low millivolts off of a cartridge up to something that your preamp or control preamp can handle. Some notable variations are the 12AX7A and the 7025, which are low noise versions. Now today, if somebody throws the, the A designation on a tube, it, it's almost meaningless. But if you have a vintage tube that's a 7025, that's a beautiful tube. It was built as a low noise tube. It was a premium tube back in the day. And today it's a very valuable tube indeed. The 7025 is a 12AX7, just built to a much tighter specification and deliberately built as a low noise tube, possibly even selected at the factory, but that I don't know for a fact. So let's take a quick look at some 12AX7s that I know well. First up is the Mullard. It's an ECC 83 or a 12AX7, and like many Mullards, it is fairly microphonic, and as a result, a moderately noisy tube. However, it makes up for these faults with a silky smooth mid-range and amazing high frequency detail. Bass, however, is only adequate. Almost any 12AX7 can match it for bass, and the big problem with this tube is availability. If you find one, the price is just out of this world. Crazy money. So, if you get your hands on something you think is a Mullard, how do you identify it? Well, if like me, you have a full inventory of thousands of tubes, you would pull out a well-labeled Mullard like this, that you were fairly certain was a real Mullard, and you would start comparing it. So, on a real Mullard, there's a seam at the top. That's how they made this generation of tube anyways. It's got a seam across. In a minute we'll see the Amperex has four seams. And we have an, a good label here, made in Great Britain. Labels on these older tubes often didn't survive. Uh, sometimes the made in Great Britain is etched, so it stays there. And now you know that it is at least a British tube. Mullards, Amperex tubes, some Siemens are very commonly counterfeited and you've got to be careful about what you're buying. Now this particular Mullard has the remnants of an acid etch date code. There's not much there. Sometimes the acid etching is not well done and sometimes it just, it, it, it rubs, what it is there rubs off and you don't have a code. Now, you can easily download um, data sheets that tell you what the manufacturer's code means and which plant the tubes were made at, and that can tell you a lot about your tube. Just because a Mullard doesn't have a clear acid etch date code does not mean that it's not a real Mullard. It can mean that you're dealing with a fake in this case, I have other Mullards. I was able to compare the plate structure, the wiring below, the way the glass is molded, and I know that for a fact that this is a real Mullard. And one of the giveaways with Mullards is that you, when you turn these on, there's something called a, um, a heater flash or a filament flash. And if you haven't seen one, it's exciting at first. You think you've bought a piece of junk. But no, this is brilliant. If you see that flash, that's a really good indicator that you've got a vintage European tube 
Mullard's not the only one that likes to flash, but they flash pretty consistently and bright. And it's not a defect of the tube, it's just how the filament uh, was connected up to the pin. They scrape back some of the um, coating, and I believe what's happened in later production tubes, newer tubes, that coating is reinstated after the connection is made. Muller did not do that, and as a result you get this flash. So, let's move on. Next up is the Amperex Bugle Boy. So named because of the car cartoonish boy with a bugle. Now, Amperex tubes are famous for losing their printing. And it's not even a sign of wear. I've had new old stock, new in the box, Amperex tubes in which the print is just literally falling off the tube. So it's not a sign of a defect, it's not a sign of use. It can be an indicator of use if it's all gone, but often what's happened is somebody who has picked that tube has decided that that little bit of scrappy print is not worth keeping and they clean it. Oh my god, don't do that! So, um, what's with the Amperex? Besides the cartoon on the face. This tube has base. Wonderful, detailed, full-on base. A nice mid-range and a high-frequency response that is very similar to the Mullard. Same problem as the Mullard, price and availability. Let's look at identifying a real Amperex Bugle Boy 12AX7. Or in Europe, the ECC83. Here, you can see that we've got four ridges, and that's how the mold went together to make the glass. On this particular tube, we can see the factory code. Let's see if you can see it. I don't know if you can or not. Yeah. There's the code. Now, if we have one row of etching, the far left symbol will be the factory. So a, a standing up engineer's or draftsman's triangle means that this is made at the Heerlen factory in Holland. So that gives us some good confirmation that this is in fact an Amperex. I have quite a few of these lying around, so I checked the top, I checked the plate structure, I checked the wiring, and I checked the acid etch state code manufacturer's code because it has other information than just the, the plant and date. And now I know that I've got a real Amperex Bugle Boy. A beautiful tube. I wish they didn't cost so much. Next, we've got a reissued Gold Lion. Not an original Gold Lion. Gold Lion, back in the day, was a, a rebrander, but a premium rebrander of tubes. So they would buy thousands of tubes in one lot of a certain type and of a certain specification, and they would resell them under their own brand name, and they became quite well known for providing good quality tubes. So, this one has a beautiful gold line and beautiful gold pins. Now, these aren't solid gold pins. It's plating, but it's, they're still nice. Connectivity with gold is supposed to be superior to the typical tin pins that we see, or even um, bronze or brass pins, which are very common in small signal tubes. So, what's with this tube? Like the Amperex, this tube has base. This, this tube has such good base, in fact, that it surpasses the Bugle Boy a wee bit. It has a very silky smooth mid-range, like the Mullard, and a nice detailed top end. It's in current production, and it's easily found. 
That makes this a good option for new production, but it is expensive. I think it's worth it. Of the all of the new production tubes I've ever tried, I would say that if you're willing to spend $45 or so US for a nice 12AX7, then this is probably one of your better choices. Made in Russia, like the next tube. This is the Electro Harmonix 12AX7EH. And like so much of the EH line, this is a solid tube. It does everything well. Noise is, however, moderate. So not the quietest tube in a full gain circuit like a phono preamp, but it is workable in a phono preamp. What it does best is the price for performance category. And what I mean is you get a lot of performance for very little money. This is an inexpensive new tube. It's readily available. When I buy collections of tubes, I almost always get a few of these. They're almost always brand new, maybe used a few hours, rolled out. Maybe people are using these as backups for their favorite Telefunken or Muller tubes. I'm not sure, but it's just a common thing. I see a lot of them coming in as twos and threes. So there you have it. That's a quick look at a handful of 12AX7s. If you haven't got a magnifying glass in your toolkit, get one. It's essential for looking at smaller tubes like the 12AX7. And in a follow-up ep episode, I'd like to take a look at a cousin of the 12AX7. Let's see if we have one here on the bench. Here's a 12AT7, or a variation of the 12AT7, a 6201, made by GE. These are fabulous tubes, and, and in many circuits that use the 12AX7, you can use a 12AT7. Why am I saying that? We're talking 12AX7s. Jim, have you gone nuts? No. What I'm talking about here is a lack of affordable vintage, quality 12AX7s. Even new quality 12AX7s are not cheap, but there are a lot of cousins of the 12AX7, notably in the 12AT7 family, that will work in many circuits that the 12AX7 does. So, up next, we'll take a look at 12AT7s. That's Jim from Valves and War signing off. And if you stayed this long, how about a little discount, discount code for the store? And there we go. Okay, everyone. Cheers.